Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing, business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Friday, which means it's time for French interesting facts about health, business, and overall success. In today's episode, we talk to Dr. Mark, is the founder of the Dental Wellness Center, which is not your typical dental practice. It's very common for people to suffer from chronic pain, shoulder pain, headaches, and insomnia, and Dr. Mark has devoted his life to helping people whose oral conditions are affecting their whole health. He has been practicing since 1993, which is over 25 years, and licensed by the Dental Board of Maryland. Mark is also a member of several dental associations, including the American Dental Association, um, Holistic Dental Association, and International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxiology. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, Dr. Mark Dinola. And some interesting facts before we get started about him is that he sure. loves yoga. He loves hiking, sailing, cooking, reading, and working out. It sounds like you like a lot of outdoor things. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like, well, you know, the whole funny thing is when you when you give my uh, bio, I, I feel like I've been doing this a long time now. You know, I start hearing the numbers. No, I, I do like uh, I lived on a lake growing up, so I do like being outside uh, and breathing. And those are some of my tips later on. I'll share with everybody. But Beautiful. Have you I try to walk sailing? the walk. I, I guess any- I try to walk the walk. You know, you, that, that, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Have you got any sailing trips planned now that it's spring's here, summer's coming in your end? Oh, not a big, like, sort of cruise sort of thing, but I have uh, sunfish and a, a number of boats uh, available to me on a lake I grew up on. And yes. so it's just if I run up on the weekend, we'll go sailing. And my dad taught me, you know, make hay while the sun shines type idea. So if the wind's up, you know, go out, that kind of thing. That's amazing. That's beautiful. And and nature it provides us with such absolutely amazing opportunities to enjoy her. So we're so blessed. But let's let's get into today's podcast and find out a bit more about you and who you are. I've listened to a few talks that you've done and you do some absolutely amazing work and I want the audience to know you. So what what have been the key turning points in the journey to where you are today, Mark? Well, I guess the biggest... Um you know, it just stopped me in my track sort of moment was when someone handed me a information about um, mercury fillings, which we were taught were safe. And uh, anyway, the long story that it, that becomes the biological dentist I am today was 2009. And, uh, you know, we talk about chickens and eggs and wormholes and, you know, rabbit holes, and you just start reading and, uh, you know, I have a number of books over here that I might share with the audience, but uh, it is just uh, the fact that I was searching for the truth and then met uh, people at the IAMT, which is the International Academy of Oral Medicine Toxicology. And, um, you know, they from there, they introduced me to other groups, but for all intents and purposes, we're looking at, you know, how the body works. And then in terms of the aspects of dentistry is, are we interfering with that? with that system by doing something in the mouth. So, I mean, you've heard of iatrogenic, iatrogenic uh, things that even physicians, dentists do that hurt somebody by accident or, you know, because of the process. Anyway, the, the things that we talk about are toxicity of metals and, um, and I love talking about nutrition. We'll get into that too. But so you go down these, you start to learn. And uh, I think it was the point where, I may have been sick myself. You know, there's always a story of why you're a natural path and why you're this and why you're that. And our own journeys are usually where the truth is, you know, where you're trying to discern like your path. And I wanted to be a dentist since I was eight years old. And then I find out in 2000, you know, many years, 15 years after practicing that, um, that we were lied to in a way. And, you know, I'm still a member of the ADA, uh, because I think organization and organized, uh, groups are important, you know, so you learn and from each other and that kind of thing. And I've taught at some ADA um, functions, but I want to be, I mean, like I am a dent, I'm doing what I want to do in my life. And so it became like a shocker. And then I just said, you know what, I'm going to have to uh, learn how to do this safely and and face it because I want to keep doing it. And um, what else did I write about? Um, You know, um, yeah. So, 
I guess it was just uncovering more of the truth. And then I was a physiology, um, I was working my physiology degree when I was in dental school. So I look at the biochemistry and physiology. And I'm always looking at how everything's tied together, ultimately, um, how systems affect systems and how some atoms affect cells, even that kind of level. So, yeah, I mean, I can go down a, a rabbit hole. We should do a live thing and we could just answer questions. Yeah, I love that. But the, the, the interesting thing for me is, is that, you know, you were a dentist and like you said, um, you've been told, you know, mercury is fine. And then I think you said 13 years you were doing it. And then all of a sudden you, like you said, you got given a pamphlet and you started reading and going into a rabbit hole and realizing, I mean, that would have been a definitely a wow moment for you, which le has led you now to doing what you do. Yeah. And honestly, this is kind of crazy to think about, but you know, it's this mad hatter sort of thing and dentists actually can get sick in their own profession and this is why it was concerning me but um in a way the mercury like being a little toxic you you start to focus on your own health and then you become a little bit you know i would even say super focused and then i would say maybe even selfish because i would be reading so much that's all i would talk about i mean my family would get sick of hearing about <laughs> mercury but you know Someday, I mean, my, it spawned a lot of other things in their lives. I mean, they're very interested in whole health, too. But um, anyway, I, I guess the question was about that, my journey. And now on the other side of this, I feel like like you make me sound like I'm doing this amazing stuff. And then I look back and I, and I am, I guess, you know, doing biological dentistry like Dr. Volz, my mentor, and Dr. Lechner and people around the world that are looking at the whole system differently. Uh, electrically, uh, and then the, neuro, the neurobiology is is unbelievable. Um, what we're learning now, so I mean, I can get into some more of those specific questions when you about how oral health may affect the body, and yeah. that you talk about later. I mean, you are doing absolutely amazing stuff, and um, yeah, just reading about we don't even take in consideration how important our oral health is. And then someone like you is there spreading this information, which I think is absolutely invaluable. Like it's just so, so valuable that, yeah, it's just crazy. And then people will finish listening to this podcast and be like, wow, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But before we get into talking about all that, I wanted to know a little bit more about optimal health and success, what that looks like for Mark. What does that look like for you at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I guess like personally, my journey would be, um, you know, that that I would function altruistically in my life with with throughout my life um, with working and playing in grace, balance, and learning. That's kind of what I thought about with my what is my health, um, you know. And if you're, I guess, you know, the altruistic thing is. Um, you know, I'm Christian, but it's, it's in every religion. It's, it's what people want to do. They want to help each other. And, um, so if my, for my thing, if I can't be, it's kind of like putting on the oxygen mask. For, I mean, there's so many metaphors you hear on these podcasts. It's like, I'm going to wind up saying all of the ones I've heard, <laughs> but, uh, but you put on your own mox, oxygen mask first, because, and that means, you know, you have to be healthy to help. And that's why I do yoga. Like before I work in the morning, I'm doing yoga and then after work, uh, or jumping jacks. I mean, in this this room I'm in, I I have weights and the punching bag, uh, jumping, and I have a vibra plate and a sauna. You know, so it's and all my plants. So um, anyway, I went off on a tangent there, but basically, I I feel like my health means that people see me as healthy, and then they ask why. It's sort of like if you have a secret sauce, you know, Jack Lalanne. Why, why do you look like you do at 70, you know, and then 80, uh, I think he lived till 90. So, so I always do jumping jacks. That's like one of my tips. I mean, I, I could give, like you said at the end, you know, what's a big tip jumping jacks is, and I crack my kids up because I say it is, it is like the best, it is the best like thing you could possibly do. You're jumping, you're opening up your spine, you're moving your limbs and you're breathing. Um, anyway, so I start my day with a hundred of them on my jogger. And then I do that at the end of the day too, which I like to do. Wow. That, that's absolutely But there's a biological dentist from California that I know that talks about rebounding and, you know, because we have to open back up because we're like this way all day. And so, you know, the whole movement thing is part of my, my health uh, 
tips, you know, that I talk about. Yeah. So you, you, you follow the health advice that you give and provide, um, which I absolutely love. It's not just you talk about it or write about it. You actually, as you said, in your room, you have all these things which support your health and which support your success through the journey. So you're able to share this information. So you're able to show up to your clients in the best possible way. I love that. Yeah. And we're all little hypocrites sometimes. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I drink a double zero Heineken now cause I don't drink, um, you know, but it's carbohydrate and, uh, but I do eat some carbs, uh, obviously. And then I eat chocolate. You know, I tell my patients, yeah, I love chocolate, you know, so, <laughs> but, but I try to, um, just instill that. And then I always talk about, uh, nutrition with patients. Just that's my side thing. When I do an exam, I just like to, uh, reference back to their mouth and and see what might be an interesting thing to talk about with them. Yeah. It'll be so interesting seeing individuals mouths and being like guessing and being like, I think I know what your diet's like. (laughs) Why don't you take a sabbatical and come and visit uh, all the biological dentists in the United States? Yeah. That'd be fun. Take it on the road. Yeah. That would be definitely interesting. (laughs) Um, Let's talk about today's topic. Um, How your oral health affects your overall health. I know it's a large topic and we could literally sit here for, we could do a 24 hour podcast talking about all these things, but we're going to try and keep it within the time and touch base on a few important topics. But to start off, I thought we'll go, when we talk about oral health, we are not just talking, we're talking about in detail, not just our teeth. What are we talking about overall? Because when people think about oral health, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, you, your teeth, but we're talking about so much more. What else is involved in oral health? Um, yes, that was a, that's a great question. I could be really super concise about it. And it's really just inflammation in the mouth. Okay. So it's like, what is the absence of health or, you know, is disease, you know, disease and that kind of thing in the mouth. It's, it's dysfunction of, um, soft tissues, blood flow, like, for example, in smokers, you'll have ischemia at blood flow or even like other drugs like methamphetamines or something where it actually collapses the blood vessels. So you have constrict, you have things like that happening because of bruxism, grinding, clenching, you have people dipping. Uh, but looking at the tissues, you want to see pink, coral pink, tightly bound down gum that looks like nice, uh, like sort of has stippling and, 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 it really looks healthy. I mean, people mostly, most people know what healthy gums look like and it's like your gums right, right there. Um, if you want to smile big for everybody. Um, but anyway, that without being boggy and, and edematous or, or swollen and bleeding, and of course no pus and things like that, um, that the contours look nice, like they're adapted to teeth. Well, um, and then the teeth, you know, uh, are so important in terms of what, what's going on in the, in the body. But, you know, we know when someone has, has an airway problem and, and is clenching, grinding and stuff. And, uh, so honestly, I, I, you're a natural path and you ask people that every physician should say, you know what, I'm going to do open, I'm going to look inside you and, and we're going to do some looking inside your body, open your mouth. I mean, this is just a brilliant idea, right? I mean, you can see in someone's the beginning of their GI, I mean, what else and their airway? I mean, it's, it's a beautiful place to be, but a lot of physicians, I have one neurologist in town who does ask about amalgams, which I think is a good idea. You know, so, but it, it, that's what I think, hopefully on the other side of all this uh, stuff that's happening in the world, I think there's going to be the truth about a lot of things. And one of the truths are that we don't, you know, I'm not Prozac deficient and I'm not, you know, a statin deficient type thing and try to find out the real truth about why people have the issues they have, you know, and quite frankly, it's the food supply mostly. Um, and then some sedentary stuff and and bad habits, but, um, I don't know what your question was. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no, you answered Um, it. Oh, so the connection, yeah, the connection. Um, I mean, and then, so that inflammation creates heat and then the heat can be detected on thermograms which we have patients do so thermography is utilized you know in canada and and other parts of the world maybe more low you know there's no radiation it's just thermal imaging and then we overlay that idea with our 3d cone beam and we can see like detect uh, 
ischemic areas in bone, and we can see where density is really poor. And then we can also see all the bone level around teeth, you know, for periodontal disease. Anyway, once you look at those observations and you see those things, and if you see red gums or bleeding, and those, you, you can then do some blood chemistries if you wanted to. And the cytokines that we're hearing about, cytokine storms, well, there's a cytokine storm in a periodontal <laughs> pocket. And the cytokine storm is generating like IL-6, which is interleukin-6, and that tumor necrosis factor and uh, other, uh, other cytokines that then go through the blood. The same bugs also produce lipopolysaccharides, which go through the blood and um, everything goes right into the bloodstream. And then those chemicals go to the liver and form and, and the, the liver increases and, and C-reactive protein goes up. And that's a marker, a biomarker for uh, heart disease, stroke. Um, I have a cardiologist friend who's sort of like a, I mean, he took his boards three times and he's a uh, pretty old, older guy, but he's like right on top of all this new stuff. Um, and it is, he had a, he had a patient with like a super, super high. I never even knew C-reactive protein could be like over a hundred, but the guy had over a hundred. Uh, and uh, anyway, um, so that's the main pathway. And that's like the most vulnerable place uh, in terms of your, your communication of your blood of, of 700 different species of bacteria in our mouths, you know, and then in the, when you have pockets or problems, those bacteria are real even closer to your bloodstream. And then this is why we pre-med for heart, you know, people with heart uh, valve issues or knee replacements, because anything we do in the mouth is going to go into the blood. Like if you floss and brush your teeth, you can get a bacteremia. Mm. And, uh, when I do a dental procedure, every pretty much hundred percent of extractions will have a bacteremia. And, uh, but we use ozone in our office to try to try to mitigate some of the things that happen with that. And I use uh, plasma rich growth factors from the patient because the holistic people don't want anything else in their bodies most of the time. And so we just take their blood and we, we spin it down in a centrifuge and then we, we make a, a beautiful clot that's theirs. It's this beautiful thing. It looks like a flan or something like that. You know, it's like a, just a glistening, um, set of platelets that actually are cells, you know, that release growth factors over six to 10 days. And they actually have your um, growth factor that, that when you do the, um, separation you actually get growth factors from that band and your blood we just that is so cool second. i've never i've never heard of um, yeah then we that. then we put that in when we put that in the bone but i'm, I'm kind of going on a tangent but i'm trying to mm -hmm. say like that that intimate structure is what's influenced by like something we do or something that's done or something that happens and you know you probably uh, i've listened to your podcast as well and you know that the airway stuff is is amazing like you have a beautiful it looks like you have a beautiful airway you probably could sing um pretty well you know and this is what uh you know people that i've studied under talk about you know are we going to have all the singers like Pavarotti? you know are we going to have the caruso coming out of uh italy when when people don't eat the way they should eat because it wow. develops a airways but anyway there are lots of chickens and lots of eggs and a lot yeah. of wormholes we go down but for all intents and purposes like the body um depending on the, the microbiome in the mouth uh so plaque is good until it's not good and that's kind of the stuff that i think about yeah wow, that's i so could interesting. go i could talk about that more but yeah, that's also interesting. I love it. And you've, you know, you've, uh, people wouldn't think that the teeth health or their oral health would cause inflammation. They just think about inflammation, you know, like rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis, um, and, and all these other things like heart disease and so forth. But there is actually a known link between heart disease and oral health. Um, it's been, it's, it's been researched and it's available out there. Are there any other ill health states connected with oral health? Um, like for example, I've I've heard a lot about uh, you've mentioned about a lot of grinding your teeth and bruxism, and things like that. So we've got heart disease. Are there, I mean, you know, you mentioned about inflammation, and we could talk about yeah. most most uh, diseases start with inflammation. So what else um, have you read about or heard about that's linked to bad oral health? 
Well, I mean, uh, the microbiome and the and the whole gut microbiome is influenced by the mouth. In in fact, you know, the, the amalgam fillings will actually change the microbiome through the whole gut, which is hard to believe. But when we swallow the mercury, the bacteria bacteriums will or bacteria uh, bacteria will 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 switch out their DNA and actually put a plasmid in and switch it out so that they they could make I think they make methyl uh, ethyl they make methyl mercury well they they get it out of their bodies somehow and then that actual that that dna itself imparts uh, antibiotic resistance so then you have all these bugs that are antibiotic resistant and there's a, a woman uh i can't think of her name um she studied this for years with uh with the microbiome of uh mice and stuff and, and it just seems like uh there's so much information out there we just need to get it get it out in the mainstream it's just hard to do that as you know um 100%. anyway i have any have any mental health illnesses been linked to oral health that you know of well the again i, I was going to bring up the the like the swiss army knife of dentistry is probably the airway stuff and that influences the brain you know now we you know uh, not oxygenating our bodies correctly. Uh, you know, Wim Hof's stuff is amazing where he's showing, he actually has him put bacteremia, uh, give him a bacteremia while he's breathing and he kills everything. So, I mean, it's amazing. So it just goes to show like, anyway, oxygen is a killer. Uh, the oxygen species is made by white blood cells, make uh, ozone and hydrogen peroxide and kills bacteria. So, I mean, um, as far as oxygenation, Mental health, I, there are some bacteria that are uh, in biopsies everywhere in the body. There's microbiome or there's bugs from the mouth. So it's not like, but I think the propensity to have more inflammation from the liver and then, then you can have more uh, inflammation in the brain. Honestly, I think it's, a, again, the food is more of the influencing like everything. I think, you know, clinical depression, you see bad uh, perio outcomes why i don't know if you know it's a chicken and the egg again you know what is it it's just they're not taking care of themselves they're not doing their oral hygiene that they get the perio and um diabetes is one that you could say uh is a chicken and the egg thing because if you have a bad control of your sugar uh your curricular fluid, the fluid around your teeth will become higher concentration of glucose. And then the bugs have a party. It's just a big party for them because they have a big food supply. So the, you can grow a pocket or you can grow uh, bacteria that are, that are bad. And then again, like I said, if you have like the wrong bugs that are resistant to certain things um, and then become more. Um, so Weston Price, who's a mentor of, uh, you know, died many many years ago but in terms of my education he showed that you could change the microbiome just by oil pulling with uh with butter and and fermented cod liver oil so they actually showed the strep mutans which causes caries with another bug uh causes decay with another bug actually goes down to like you could almost wipe it out to zero so just by just by so that gives you like an indication of if you have a carbohydrate rich sort of environment, is that going to influence certain bacteria and yeast? I mean, other bugs and, and uh, you know, we could go we could go talk about bugs a lot. I mean, I love talking about bugs because uh, we got to kill the bugs, but we, we can't make a desert out of our mouth every night. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to influence what's there, agitate it, oxygenate it. Um, you know, Weston Price saw people with plaque all over their teeth with no cavities. It's because they didn't have carbohydrate sources that were, you know, ubiquitous everywhere. Um, all you can eat. Wow. You guys have more sugar. You guys have more sugar down under than we do, which is uh, shocking to me. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> oh. it's not. It's not that shocking to me living here. So <laughs> I saw that sugar film, which was great. Australian yeah. guy. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. It was really fun. Yeah, yeah the, the Australian diet um, isn't optimal at the moment, but hopefully, with information like that you share, that I share, that other people share, 
were able to bring that awareness up because as you said even having and we're, we're going to talk I'm gonna, the next question we're going to talk about you know what foods and, and and drinks impact our oral health and yeah but we have never been taught this um you know and some people haven't even been taught to brush their teeth i've met a few people yeah. and they've they've grown up and they've said you know my parents it was wasn't a thing I, I started going to school and people were like brushing their teeth and i was like what so there's even still that the basics of oral hygiene yet alone that food impacts oral health um that link yeah. hasn't been shared to kids yeah. nor has it shared to adults so yeah tell us tell us about this food so-called impacting our oral health <laughs> yeah i mean i i guess a lot of people that watch your show and listen to you understand the, the microbiome is influenced by the food. So it's not that hard of a leap to say, you know, that it's going to do the same thing in the mouth. But yeast, uh, I say mention yeast because um, I just feel like things are crowded out. You know, the in the, in the uh, intestinal lining, you have a nice uh, mucus layer, which you do not have in the mouth, you know, so you don't have that barrier. Anyway, there are um, uh, the the pathophysiology, or the if you think about periodontal disease as it moves forward from like nothing to losing teeth, it's like this huge uh, insidious sort of thing that doesn't hurt, which is one reason why people all of a sudden have a loose tooth and it never hurt. And um, most of the disease I focus on in my office is hidden and is asymptomatic. So that's why we use like tools like thermography and CTs, but it's, it's, it's really amazing that I always say it's good that people don't have pain because I wouldn't be able to leave the office. I mean, they'd be down the street because there's so much disease and um, most of it doesn't hurt. Um, but there's a, also a, a cytokine that's downregulated. IL, IL-6 is downregulated in some of these infections in the jaws. It's so that the pain doesn't happen. It's like actually downregulated, which that might be the first question I ask if I ever, you know, have someone who can answer all those questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and it's interesting that you said there's no pain. So a lot of us would be maybe silently suffering with our oral health and we're not going to the dentist because we're not in pain. Um, cause we've been you know, taught only we go right. somewhere when we are in pain. That's, that's really interesting. So there might be some audience listening and being like, maybe I have periodontal disease. Maybe I don't. Yeah, the the signs and symptoms that are 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 things that you see and smell, and so you know, it's not even a joke. But but in our in the dental community, of course, you make light of things that you see all the time, and, and bad breath is just you know something that we're going to see with with really bad periodontal disease and and with other situations too. You know, when someone's healing and that kind of thing. So. Um, but the anaerobic bacteria that produce sulfur, they produce sulfur dioxide, mercaptans, and they're these sulfury laid uh, mercaptan uh, is what they put in natural gas so you can smell it. And so these things don't smell good. And, you know, it's like that whole joke about putting scope on, on Sally's desk or, you know, Larry's desk because, uh, you know, anonymously you want to give them a hint. But, you know... I mean, someone just told me a story that they couldn't commute with somebody because the guy had periodontal disease. And it's just, yeah, I mean, anyway, so that's a sign or a symptom. And then bleeding, um, when, you, when you brush, you should not bleed. And when you floss, you should not bleed. If you floss too hard, you can bleed, but that means you're, that it means you're flossing too hard. It doesn't mean you have gum <laughs> disease. So you just have to learn how to floss more gingerly. And uh, I recommend water picks and 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 more like that and oil pulling um but uh the other signs and symptoms would be headaches i mean for the grinding and flatness of teeth the canine in particular usually would be would be flat or flattened and you could the way i think about it or the way i show a patient is is by making the puzzle that becomes the pattern or or the pattern that becomes the puzzle rather so if you if you smile and you and you move your teeth from one side to the other, and if you see it go briskly across the canine and then it crosses over, I always tell patients we don't eat that way. We don't eat like cows, you know. <laughs> so we eat up and down, and so we know we grind that way and clench. And some people actually grind forward too. 
I actually grind forward a little bit. So this is all airway stuff that we talked about before. That's what's impacting our health is the airway. And so the signs and symptoms that are silent, you know, hypertension unexplained is, is a sleep apnea thing. Um, dementia, sleep apnea. I mean, all these things you, you were asking about, we can see it. I mean, this is why physicians should, should be looking inside patients' mouths too. You know, let's see what that airway looks like. The ENT, I have an ENT friend who's really um, close to me. And, you know, he, he knows the oral stuff, um, how it's impacting the sinuses things like that. I'm so glad that you as a dentist have spoken about sleep apnea because um, it's absolutely huge. Sleep apnea impacts literally every single organ of our body um, and it can literally cause so many issues. Um, yeah. You know, hypoxia, one one of the, one of the major ones, um, you know, not getting oxygen. And then it's kind of like, well, that makes the link of the bacteria growing in your mouth that shouldn't be growing. <laughs> and even yeah. sleeping with your mouth open. I mean, you're just opening yourself up to issues, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, our nose is a filter. Our nose also makes nitric oxide. Our microbiome makes, our oral microbiome makes a nitric oxide too. Yeah. I mean, many times people have uh, medicine uh, giving them a dry mouth. We call it xerostomia. Xerostomia is, causes cavities, you know, so then it's like this whole, again, like I told my kids, ch many chickens, many eggs. It just, it keeps going. Like what, okay, I have cavities, but why did I have cavities? Is it nutritional? Is it mm. the medicine? You know, medicines cause deficiencies. You probably know zinc, magnesium are deficiencies in many, many uh, meds that go through the liver, I guess, need for, for enzymes. Um, and then uh, B vitamins also are depleted in that system. So, yeah, I mean, it, the nutrition, the, that's the big part I like to chat with people about is uh, nutrition and then how that's influencing the mouth. I live right, or uh, my office is right near a highway. Sorry about that. That's all good. No issue. So yeah. what would be, so the audience listening and you're saying, you know, nutrition is a big thing. So what would be some common foods? You mentioned carbohydrates, but just to make it a bit more simpler, what would be some common foods that would affect the oral, by, uh, oral health in a negative way? Yeah, well, anything... Well, uh, I kind of look at it again in the physiology sense of it, which is the taste bud, which is the sugar taste bud, and then how that is rare. You know, that was a very sensitive uh, system that was set up because it was rare. So anything that lights up your your taste buds, uh, that's sh that's sweet, and so that's fake sugars and real sugars. I mean, an orange, of course, has fructose, but it's a different uh, fructose than high fructose corn syrup stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I listened to your podcast, actually I videotaped a little bit the other day about um, the, the sugar substitutes that are natural, you know, and I made a joke about the dates because you should go on more dates because it, it might help your muscle uh, twitches because it, you have potassium. I thought that was a joke I, I made up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You have to have some um, humor in the industry that we work in, and especially yourself. You would see so many things that you just have to have a bit of humor, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we have. We, and, you know, the sad thing is we have really sick people, so we have to blow off some steam when we're, uh, we get this pretty intense, you know, getting some of that. You probably know, you probably do a little energy work with people and stuff. And, we're in their aura, you know, we're working right around their aura. And, um, honestly, I, I, there was a phone call I heard the other, you know, it was about insurance, but the person was very rude. It's like, we don't need that energy in our office. And I told them that she should not talk to anybody like that. If now it's, I know she's talking to a machine. So I'm like, she's talking to a machine. She's just <laughs> yelling at the machine. But if she talked to anybody like that, I wouldn't want them in the office for my, for the health of my, my, my team, you know, but 100%. anyway, so, so it's like that kind of thing I think about, you know. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So what would, so, you know, some, the foods that, you know, you mentioned, you know, sugar taste buds were really rare back in the days. Um, so it's interesting that, you know, sugar intake in America and Australia has skyrocketed through the roof. And I guess that's definitely one thing that does affect our oral, oral health in a negative way. 
So what would be some common nutritional deficiencies that affect our oral health? So for example, um, what I've uh, done a bit of research on is, you know, low vitamin C can cause bleeding gums and things like that. Are there any one, any other ones that you can comment on? Yeah, the vitamin C is, you know, has been known for years with scurvy and Captain Cook and they, um, you know, they started carrying sauerkraut after that and then they alleviated that issue. Actually, I thought it was like a plague, you know, on the ship. Um, but yeah, so K2, actually any fat soluble vitamin A, K, D3, K2, uh, E, and E. You know, the fat soluble vitamins that are lacking in most of our standard American diet, stand, maybe our standard Australian diet, is because it's not the fact that they don't get it at all. It's the fact that they have 60% of their food or our food is, is highly refined food. That's just, not, you know, it's shelf stable. It has all its, all the grains, all the germs out of it and nutritional, the stuff that oxidizes is what they take out of it. You know, and I've read so many books on all this stuff. I mean, it's... Um, it's crazy how much uh, is in my head because, I, I mean, I love learning about it, but then it's like one more thing to, to understand. And um, But I, I don't want to stop because, um, you know, I guess I'll be on my next podcast someday. I'll be talking about my book because I just read a lot of people's books and then and then I try to do my work. And I don't know if I have necessarily the time to uh, – to write right now. I mean, I do scribble and write and I have some good ideas, but, um, but the nutrition, so K, K2 is this really singular one that Pre Weston Price sort of discovered and it was, they, they called it the price factor and, or factor X. And it was common in, in almost every place he went. And it was a, a fat soluble vitamin that's, we call methoquinone or MK7 or MK, you know, it has all the MKs actually all the way up. And, um, so like in cheeses and, and fermented dairy and eggs. And um, so that, that particular vitamin is, is known now. And I've, I've said this on a recent podcast, which is just pretty new information, but it actually influences the parotid gland. The parotid gland influences the brain and the brain releases a hormone to pump, make the teeth like fountains. And I, I just find that like, symmetry like something crazy about how cool that is and um you know it's 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 a bang bang pathway thing and so what happens is the the teeth are resistant to plaque when they're a fountain and um that goes back to the physiology that's why i like it it's just i, I said that pretty well i'm glad we're recording this because I, I i thought that sounded pretty good but that's exactly it's very complicated and it has a lot of names with the, the, the things that are influencing, as you know, the hormone stuff, and it's very tedious, but, um, but hey, the K2, if, if you're lacking K2, you're not going to bring in the calcium into teeth and bone. And so calcium becomes this problematic thing that has to be sort of dealt with because you can't have too high a concentration of calcium in your blood. So it sort of like precipitates on arteries and teeth and kidneys and makes stones. And so, you're kind of like a, I wrote, I drew a little sketch of a coffee, ma coffee maker. You're kind of like a coffee maker, you know, where inside it starts to get a little bit calcified. So, but K2 facilitates that movement and, and stores it into our, our calcium storage unit, which is our skeleton and our teeth. So, yeah. um, you know, women, women release 25% of their calcium when they're, when the cartilage and the baby goes to become bone and that kind of thing. So that's so interesting. Yeah, yeah, so, I've heard also that women should be getting their teeth uh, checked a lot more when pregnant um, and, and cleaned a lot more often when pregnant. Is that got to do with that? Yeah. I mean, the, the, like I said, the bone, um, well, it's pretty vascular in the mouth, but the, the long bones are, they're all susceptible to, to giving up calcium without losing strength. But I, the teeth thing is kind of, I always think of it as a wives tale, but then again, if you're, if you're already deficient and you know, the baby's definitely going to take whatever you have <laughs> away from, you, you know, <laughs> it's going to, going to win. I think at some point, at some point, I guess maybe nature knows best, you know, anyway. 
Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I love that you mentioned all of those vitamins because uh, we went through talking about diet and foods that you know may reduce are bad for our oral health, carbohydrates, sugars, and so forth. And then we went and talked about nutritional deficiencies, uh, and vitamins, and minerals that affect our oral health, the deficiencies. And you've spoken about all fat soluble vitamins, which is so interesting. And you've mentioned the K, vitamin D, E, and so forth. And, 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 and vitamin D, even though we're such a sunny country here in Australia, um, they've actually stopped testing vitamin D on most individuals because the doctors say you are already deficient. There's no yeah. point in testing because you're deficient. And it's interesting because that would definitely impact our teeth, our oral health, right? Yeah. I mean, the one that I just learned, I mean, this is why I go down uh, and read uh, <laughs> these rabbit holes because so high fructose corn syrup, I think it it knocks out the last enzyme or one of the enzymes to make, to make D a functional hormone. So high fructose corn syrup is to kick in you in the butt that way. Uh, and that could be the reason, I mean, cause it's everywhere. I mean, it could be one of the reasons. I also think we're just not absorbing. And again, the food is absent of that. Uh, I mean, we have grass fed beef around here. Actually, we, we I'm not going to say the store name, but we get, Grass-fed beef from Australia at one of the stores. It's they're sourcing it there, so nice. It's kind of cool. cool. But anyway, that that uh, that whole the whole idea of the of the uh, the pathway of making K two is a beautiful thing too. Yeah, talking about meat, let's talk about vegans and vegetarians, right? So, are vegans and vegetarians in danger of poor oral health, and how can they overcome this if they are? Well, I like to say um, that you could be a vegetarian if, if it's if it's a really super, super good diet. And in terms of uh, working out the whole sensitivity issues like phytates and, um, and also uh, sprouting and, and getting things like worked out in terms of lectins. And, and then they need to eat ghee. Uh, which I always get kickback from, but I, I say the, the most vegetarians on the planet are in India. I mean, they're millions, millions, and they're healthy. So why and how? Well, they're they're beautifully fit, thin, but they they have their teeth unless they're getting into the sugar situation, which we're all getting into, right? Uh, but I think it is a it's a you have to get that source of, of fat somewhere. Um, K2 can also be obtained through like fermented soybean. So natto, Japanese, Asian culture, um, it's that so super high in terms of K2. So some of the nutrition you can get in other places, but I mean, the most nutrient dense thing is the liver, um, and vegetarians don't eat liver. And a lot of Americans don't eat liver. A lot of Australians don't eat head to tail. So... I actually might, I'm probably going to be on a podcast that's, that's going to talk about that, but I'm just going to be talking about safe removal of mercury and <laughs> the mercury issues, because I don't really want to go talk about the diet part. I just want to talk about how mercury affects the body. And, yeah. um, but I try to be politically, like I try to be cognizant of the, the platform I'm on and don't want to insult anybody, but I mean, I also have a lot of knowledge about different things. Mm. Um, but the plant, plant-based idea you know that's even running into the whole idea of whether eating a burger is going to be good for the environment and honestly that that's another thing that's not told the true story of that is if you if you know how to raise cattle where you're not taking all the grass down to the dirt then you're making a good biome in the earth in the earth sequestering carbon so i mean these are all these things that that the if somebody controls the narrative and we can't get or, you know, the truth can't be just debated. We, we need to debate things more, you know. Oh, 100%. So with the vegans and vegetarians, is the issue, the main issue, the K2, is that what it is? Well, I, I think there's another issue, which is um, whether they're satiated possibly um, because they have too many carbs going. I mean, I, I'm not an expert on that. Mm -hmm. I, I just told someone, I, the only expert, I'm an expert, as much as I can be in my field, but these things, I know a lot about a lot of things. I just don't want to insult anybody, but I just, I, I think any, any plant-based person would also say that, that some of these fake burgers are not 
healthy. I mean, they're just, it's a chemical thing that that's there. So if you pro highly process anything, then you're in trouble. Like when I was eating veggie burgers, they were like black bean burger with it. You see the oats and stuff in it. I mean, you see the oats and you see everything in there. It's like, that's a burger substitute, you know, but anyway, they're, they're starting to generate these highly processed uh, mm. plant proteins. And then you're going to look at GMO and, and, glyphosate issues, which is, I mean, this is why I, I can go down tangent so quickly because there's just too much to talk about with all that. I feel like I like, I'm Italian. I like, I like, you know, broccoli Rob and zucchini. And I eat like, I eat a lot of different vegetables and I eat olives, but I try to stay a little like Mediterranean, you know, yeah. as far as my diet. But I, I think people should know where they come from. And I think, um, you know, it may be that we, when we get more into the genetics of, of selecting foods that we know, uh, we understand that better. Um, if you were from, let's say Germany and you didn't eat head to tail, maybe that would be a problem because they, you know, that way. And so did mm. Italians, everybody in, in the Mediterranean has some kind of sausage or, or, uh, you know, full head to tail kind of product. And, yeah, um, they, they, they do too. You're so right. A hundred percent. No, I love, I love that insight. I love that insight about sharing that with us. Um, and, and going back to where we are from and how we ate. Um, I guess the whole point is, is don't eat processed junk and just go back to mother nature, go back to yeah. your garden, um, pick the fruit, the vegetables out yourselves. And if you do eat meat, have, have your own pigs, your own cattle, your own, whatever you have, all people that you know, if you can't have your own and that you trust the sources from, I guess that's the bottom line. And that affects your oral health in a positive manner. <laughs> Yeah. One of the things I will say is I do talk to patients about diet and I think that a, a vegetarian diet might be a great detox diet, hmm. you know, just to, just to, you know, because a lot of times you'll, you'll read studies that um, say they introduce something like fruits, more fruits. And they, what they do is they get rid of some of the junk in their, in their life. And they don't realize that's part of what the problem was in the first place is the choice of foods were incorrect, you know? And so they start to substitute the good, like you were talking about broccoli sprouts. Okay. So now someone's going to eat broccoli sprouts. Well, they're not eating something else, you know, maybe that's not good for them. So yeah. Uh, anyway, I love talking about food with people. 100%. And uh, I thought of, after I saw that sugar movie, I thought of, cause they went to the supermarket, you know, I thought if you took everything out of the store, but left what was healthy, like, it was a prank. I mean, I don't want to give anybody ideas, but if somebody wants to do it, I mean, it could be a spoof, like a movie. Like <laughs> they just, they just take everything with sugar added or, or plant or seed oils. You know, the seed oil might be oh, a problem, yeah. right? You know, everything out of there, what would be left, you know, be just like the vegetables and, you know, that's what they say. Just go around the sides. You mm. know? A hundred percent. No, I couldn't so, agree more with yeah. you. A hundred percent. Look, I've, I've, I've actually heard the benefits of um, green tea for oral microbiome, which limits the growth of certain bacteria associated with periodontal disease, which we spoke about earlier. Um, have you heard about this? And is there anything, any other foods or drinks that are really beneficial for our um, oral microbiome? Um, as far as that specific, you know, green tea, I never read an article on. I did one read one. Uh, it basically had to do with the antioxidant capacity of E E E G G or E. I forget what the initials are, um, but it has a ton of like available electrons. So it's just big. It's like a big crazy thing. Um, but food, uh, fermented dairy, cheese. I like ghee. I like uh, Gouda has has nice K two in it. I mean, I usually eat eggs in the morning, but I don't eat them every morning. Um, it, you know, the yellow yolk has, uh, yeah. So influencing something that's, if you think of the opposite of something that's sh sugary and sticky and stuff, you think of things that are like um, a buffering capacity of, of like a cheese before you start eating all, everything at a party, go for the cheese first. I always tell me, and then you buffer that uh, inner prox in between the teeth, you know, gets buffered and you can kind of go and then go eat and, and be a little safer. Um, trying to think, I, I do recommend a lot of people just rinse. I mean, I had water here, um, rinse with water throughout the day and just swish around and, mm. you know, just trying to, uh, if you look at a time-lapse film of plaque being formed, you know, it's like being formed all the time. So you just, if you can kind of rinse things, 
you know, the, the texture of food is one of the things we talk about. Maybe that's, we're getting soft foods and it's not moving that stuff out. You know, like think about celery as like floss, right? <laughs> you know, just the way you're eating or a carrot or apple. I mean, it's just the contour of our teeth. And it, there's these, the spaces between our teeth are actually made for food to slide down like a sleuth, a sleuth way, you know, because it's what well, they're called embrasures. Those embrasures just like let food kind of mush out the sides and your tongue is kind of moving the food on top of the teeth without your knowledge. It's amazing. But so interesting. That texture wow. of texture of food is is important for your to, to influence the bacteria and the plaque. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, like just these sticky cracker things that are on kids' teeth and you know, uh, rice crispy treats and you know, it's just endless. If you go down like any aisle that's just exclusively like we have Halloween. Do you have anything like that? Halloween? Yeah, we know. do. We're starting to uh, follow Americans. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you're ahead of us with the sugar. So, but if you go down <laughs> a huge aisle, you just go from one side and you're like, Oh, I know that one. I know that one. And, you know, 1900 was the Hershey bar was invented. And I, I have these dates in one of my talks, you know, lifesaver was 1913 and, you know, Italian guys invented the Tic Tac and all these candies, but it's like unreal how many different candies there are. So many, so many different ones. And I confess, I confess, uh, I like um, uh, licorice. It's my other thing they, I like. But there is some anti-caries, supposedly, anti-cavity promoting thing in there and digestion. <laughs> and, yeah, and they yes. said something about COVID. There Did you I go. just say that? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. interesting. Yeah, there is. Um, that's that's the herbal licorice. herbal part of licorice. Anise, <laughs> Not the full anise. sugar. <laughs> anise, anise. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah. it. But before we kind of close off, I did want to touch base on mercury, right? Because that is your specialty. Uh, you you essentially find mercury fillings in individuals' mouths, and then decide to remove it, which can be very dangerous, right? Tell us a little bit about those individuals who may have mercury in their mouths and how do they know they have mercury and what can happen and what they should do? Well, a lot of referring doctors or people like you or their healthcare professionals that realize, you know, that this might be part of the issues. I mean, the one, the number one thing is thyroid that I see patients with. And so what will happen is people start feeling crummy, you know, they take sin synthroid for a while or something you know maybe 10 years and they're just they're gaining weight that kind of thing they're getting older of course it is diet we just talked about that but the fact that mercury influences the uh the manufacturing of t t3 to t4 and some of it it goes into the iodine site it messes up the enzyme actually and then it also screws up in three ways it's a it's a triple <laughs> triple hitter there. It also gets selenium, you know, it, it chelates with selenium. So, so it's kind of a reverse engineering thing for me. Like I don't tell them I could get them better. I'm not a physician, but I'll say, let's get your mercury out. Maybe your doctor can influence, you know, we can look at your going on to, you know, into another type of uh, medicine like armor, you know, or something else, a natural um, thyroid, you know? And so, so I'll have people come in that'll, that see some of the new movies and some of the content on TV or uh, on uh, YouTube and stuff, some of these podcasts. So people like you, they'll come in and what we're doing is we're focusing on uh, not allowing that stuff to really enter the body, just come out of the body. So it has to be cut out. And unfortunately, you know, there is a, there's a vapor that's generated and a particulate that's generated during those times so we have to be very careful and we we uh mitigate all the um the things by we isolate the, each individual tooth that we're removing the mercury so it, it's like a gasket against the mouth that's called a rubber dam and i have all this on my website which is mddentalwellnesscenter.com and it's also on the iaont iaomt's website you know it's safe removal we call it we call it smart technique safe amalgam removal technique um and then the, basically there was an accreditation that i first took when i was in the iomt and it's it's basically um prepping the patient somewhat now a lot of natural paths will do like uh myers cocktail or or get a bolusing with vitamin c 
you know, and I like them pooping every day. And those are the things I ask patients, you know, so then, and lots of water. And then we, we isolate everything and we take it out. We're wearing our masks. We're giving the patient oxygen. And there's also a suction that's underneath their chin that sucks, uh, through a filter that has sulfur and a scrubber basically for the mercury. And we also have a negative ion generator across the roof, you know, ceiling there too. And all those things, when we do all those things, we cut and we drape the patient. So then when we're done with the mercury, removal, we take all that stuff and put it in a plastic bag and we actually get it outside because it, it does off gas. So the idea is just remove all of it. You know, then I do the filling slowly when I have no more mercury to deal with. We, we take all our garb off. And we clean up the patient. I mean, we use activated charcoal and different things for prep. But for all intents and purposes, there are, there are some particles that can be generated that fall off. So that's on the on the blanket or the paper. And then we have a sulfur group, a sulfur thing that we smear on the the rubber dam as well. And the suction's really tight next to the patient's mouth. And we're also using the high vacuum suction also. We're, we're rinsing everything down, getting that all cleaned up. And that's the, that's the safe method. That's the safe removal. It's they're breathing oxygen. We're not breathing the mercury. <laughs> they're not breathing the mercury. The particulates dealt with in the room because there's been a study where it's a 20 centimeter s- scatter sort of, of that. And then we wipe down the instruments and we get all that out of the patient's life, you know. Then we like high five, you know, mercury's out. <laughs> but it, it can be done. We do half mouth, sometimes uh, full mouth, depending. We do some sedations. Not everybody does. Some people do IV. I don't really do IV. I like to just do an oral uh, ansiolysis, which is just, you know, uh, halcyon, uh, about half the dose you would take for, for sleeping pill. And uh, then we titrate in some nitrous oxide. And they get the person like pretty out, uh, pretty out. You know, sometimes people snore, uh, but it it also gives this time, this twilight, not twilight, but uh, it, it gives a little bit of amnesia associated with the drug. So it's like they were here for twenty minutes. It's nice, <laughs> but um, yeah. So that's the safe removal. I mean, we have a we have uh, for the environment. It's in in our basement is a scrubber, uh, which we will recycle that. Um, you know, it's, there's 30% silver, 54% mercury in a silver filling and a mercury filling, tin and uh, copper. So these, all these metals, you know, are, are taken out safely. So you think about all those metals in the body are a little battery. So that's the other thing we talk about. Holistic dentistry is something called galvanism. And it's not Calvinism, it's galvanism, which is like uh, how a current it flows. You might know from a boat, uh, you know, sometimes they put a sacrificial anode on the boat. It's a zinc. It's like on the hull because the, they don't want the, you know, the copper uh, propeller to, to corrode, right? So they, they put the sacrificial anode on there. I mean, those cool things that you learn from boating and stuff gets applied to your dentistry. But that's the stuff we kind of are starting to ignore a little bit more. Mm. Uh, and, and we need to restore that understanding. Yeah, 100%. Because so, it's electrical. You mentioned the uh, brain yeah. stuff. I mean, it's mm. it's like 100 times or 1,000 times more more current than your brain. It's like not supposed to be there. No, it's not supposed to be there. So someone might be listening and be like, I have, like they might say, I have one of them, right? So do they, if they... So the first thing is, I guess, to remove it, but they have to find someone like yourself who does it in a, you just mentioned uh, the whole process, which is absolutely amazing. And you definitely look after the individual, but also yourself and your staff. So is it best to get it out? Is it best to leave it in there? Like what should people do if they've got mercury feelings? Well, the, you know, the point of the, the hardest point is like saying it has to be done safely and that a regular dent, you know, a, a traditional dentist can't do it. And that's unfortunate, but we also want to teach this. I mean, I, I was at my dental society meeting, you know, they think I'm black sheep anyway, but I'm just like, we can teach you how to do this. It's just, you know, it is just, it's, it's sort of like, I mean, I, I looked this up cause I thought maybe I'll just learn how to take out, take lead paint off of buildings. You know, there's lead paint course you take it's only it's only a weekend course you just then you learn how you don't want to sand the paint because it has lead in it so you don't want to get the dust in the air you know but i learned how to do it by by the same principles you know you 
everything we know how to do already. It's just, you have to adopt it. And, uh, mm. but, but if you are looking for someone, you go on the IOMT's website, and you look up, you know, uh, your zip code in your case, you know, the province or whatever. Um, but it has a nice interactive map even internationally. So that's so good. And there's that's always, good. yeah. And I can't do it all. Dr. Volz and, and many of our biological colleagues say we can't do it all. We want to just teach, maybe go back to these principles and, uh, you know, teach, teach them as many people as we can. Yeah. Cause it, there is some danger because, uh, Unfortunately, like it can be the straw that broke the camel's back, especially if they're seeing you and they're sick. And so I have like a guy in Charlottesville who's so good at prepping the patient, getting them ready with supplements. And, um, and then they'll come in and I'll take their mercury out with confidence that they're stable, you know, feeling stable. Mm. And, um, but you know, it takes a lot of care, but we don't have, there's a hundred million Americans with mercury. There's no way I can see a hundred million Americans, you know? And yeah. so there's about a thousand people in the IOMT, or, you know, we're learning, we're trying to grow. I mean, we, we give students to uh, free tuition, like just to come. So dental, if someone just graduates, they can come for free and there's a scholarship program. I don't know how big it is now, but, um, we just, that's why I'm doing podcasts like this. I'm, I'm completely booked out for two, two and a half months. So, but it, but I want to disseminate the information so other people can learn about it. You know, maybe I can get some, maybe one dentist will hear me and then they'll come to my office and they'll buy my practice. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. And, and, and yeah. it's so good. I'd love to teach good. people, love to yeah. teach people, you know, it'd be cool to, to have a mentor, you know, or, you know, somebody who follows in my footsteps, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. I love that. And you share such valuable information and it's helping individuals. It's going to, it's all about getting their health back on track and by doing something simple or not so simple for you, but simple as removing a mercury feeling their health might get better. And it's like, wow, why didn't I do this 10 years ago? Why didn't I do this before? Now my overall health is so much better. So I love that you share this information. Um, can so I, can I, are, are we, are we wrapping up? Yes. Are we going to wrap up? Tell me, is you okay. want to share something Well, else? let's just do something after I'm going to show you my books. Awesome. That I was, I didn't want to do that now. So awesome. You can do share you, it later. Also, you can share your books. Go for it. Go for it. Let, let's look at, let's look okay. at some books. Let's go for it. Okay. Well, this is, I, this is something I thought of doing on a podcast because it just generates a lot of ideas. Like, so, you know, here's a, here's a book we took on histology of teeth. You know, this shows the tubules. Okay. And then there's like, we know when it happens. These are just, you know, the tubules and, um, and that's what makes that fountain, you know, happen. And then I have this, you might know about this guy. You might know the dental diet. Okay. No, I haven't heard of that. He's from, he's from your Steve. You don't know him. He's from your hometown. Oh, okay. He's not in Melbourne. Look. I think. Yeah. Nice. You got to interview him. He's a, he's a nice guy. I, 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 Never, I don't know him, but I personally, you know, the Gerson, Gerson diet, that's what yep. I was talking about. Vegetarian, you know, tr these are things that I picked up over the years, different courses. This I read t the only like geeky book I read Organism. twice, but yeah. it's basically talking about like biology that I didn't understand, you know, at the time when I first learned that. Um, and then there are brave dentists that teach, you know, about what's in the office, you know, people that were, that got sick. Um, this, my favorite, uh, I quote people, uh, is Dr. Thomas Levy. He's an attorney and a cardiologist. You know, his mother was proud, you know, as you would say, but he's <laughs> written several books. He's written several books. And this, this book, he basically, you know, he's throwing dentistry under the bus, honestly, and, and he's doing it, it with grace, you know, where, uh, where he's, he's basically talking about, I mean, he actually starts talking about uh, the thyroid right away. Like you have to have the right, uh, you know, burn rate of, of your cells or the enzymes aren't going to work. It, the chemistry is not going to work. It's just, it's, it's brilliant. As you would say that you picked that up from the Brits or did you come up with that? Brilliant. <laughs> but anyway, I, I made that. a bookmark. I made a bookmark out of this. That's kind of funny. Um, smart, smart, smart. Yeah. Um, so, so there are predecessors of West of Price. You know, I've read his his book, but uh, Melvin Page talked a lot about um, 
diet. And one of the things he talked about was this whole uh, fluid, but also calcium balance. It's calcium to phosphorus ratio, which is, it's really influenced by sugar. So that's another reason we get cavities. So you mess up the ratio of these ratios and mineral balance is something that really, are, really aren't, uh, oh, there's something up your alley, the artificial sweeteners. There you go. <laughs> which are very dangerous. Very um, dangerous. You know, and then, and then this is a Brit. Actually, I think he's a Brit. Graham Hall. He's Yeah, he's British. He's kind of like our Hal Huggins, your Hal Huggins, or an English uh, Hal Huggins. Anyway, that's the ones I sampled. I have other ones, but I just, um, you know, the, the 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 quote I make the most is that Hal or um, Tom Levy basically discusses the fact that his last book he basically says it's not just a coincidence or comes with like heart disease and periodontal disease or root canals or whatever oral infections are causing heart disease. He says they're causal. He has uh, hundreds uh, of references of his papers and it's that whole pathway we are talking about. So it's a number of things, but it's, he's, he's basically concluded that it is cause you're at risk and, or it is, is being defined by some of these things that are happening in the mouth. And it's not a big leap. Honestly, it's not really a big leap when I just described at the beginning of the podcast, all the, the stuff that's going on there. So anyway, I've thought a lot about all this and, and I just take what they do. You know, some people say just putting the dot, connecting the dots is what really genius is. All I'm doing is reading a bunch of stuff. People read. Or wrote and and kind of coming up. And with now you got to write. Now you got to write your own book. Yeah, you have to. There's this thing that I've said. If you want to write your own book, uh, I've heard that for a whole year you have to stop reading other people's books, so then you can write your own. <laughs> I did hear that too. You know, and I was thinking about taking a crack. I have a lot of notes. Um, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, you'd be so valuable. You've got so much knowledge and so much information that you've just absorbed. And you're just like, I just want to get it out there. Um, and do let us know if you do release your book, I would definitely hundred percent be jumping on it to promote it and purchase it. Cause there'll be so much valuable information out there. Um, so just to finish off, what would be like three or two or one even practical tip to, for people, for the audience to incorporate, to have, healthy oral health what would be that that those tips well um i think uh the frequency of food is an issue that that kind of goes along with ancestral eating and stuff um of course we talked about the carbohydrate issue um i do think the sleep um is really influencing our circadian rhythm and influencing you know our, our oral microbiome especially for mouth breathing um we're, just, we're dealing with a lot of kids these days, you know, with, with tonsils that are huge and it's because they're breathing through their mouth. So sleep disorder breathing is something we're studying now and, and we're treating patients with the oral appliances to try to intervene even at, actually they they have a, I could, I could mention the product, I guess. But anyway, it's just, it's on my website, but it's, it's the idea is just expanding the arch and, and letting the, letting the mandible grow, you know, without being tied into the upper arch and, um, getting, getting the tongue trained to hit the palate. And, um, I know your, your question was, <laughs> what do we do? Um, but yeah, the oral, um, uh, health, uh, it's really, uh, thinking about what food is, is not, it's not for pleasure and all this other stuff. It's your medicine. It's, it's really running your body. And when you think that some cog is going to be influenced by something you eat, you know, you have to think about your machinery and it's a lot of people don't understand that. You know, we talk about the airway, but that means oxygen's going into our bodies and then going into the cell, you know, and making energy. It, oxygen has to go all the way into the mitochondria and we don't think about all this stuff, but you know, um, air quality at night is important too, and air quality during the day. And, uh, we didn't really talk about the, the seed oils, but it could influence the fats. You know, the fats are so cholesterol, um, provides a raft for receptors on cells, membranes. So it's like, we don't, you know, taking it away is not a good idea. 
So, mm. you know, I, giving advice about diet is tricky because people don't want to talk about some of that stuff. But avoiding the junk is really a big key thing because <laughs> we talked about how it influences what bugs grow and what bugs don't grow. So. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, throughout the whole podcast, you've given us and provided us with some valuable tips, what to do or not to do. And I guess everyone's situation is personal. Um, and, and the thing is, is if you want to get your health on point, the whole thing that we want to get across is, is don't forget about your oral health. If you want optimal health and if you want to achieve health, then please consider your oral health as a part of it, not just, oh, it's just a thing, like, oh, I just brush my teeth and stuff like that. It could be the cause of some of the issues that you may have. I guess that's the overall point that we're trying to get across in this podcast. Yes. And we were so blessed to have you, Mark, join us here Thank you. and share such valuable information. Really, really, really do appreciate it. And and I'm going to put down in the show notes where individuals will be able to find you if they do want to come see you or if they want to get more information um, or if they want to he- wait for your book to come. <laughs> Yeah. Well, now I now I put now it. Now you have to write it. Yeah, now you have to. Well, <laughs> we're, all writing a, we're all writing a book, aren't we? We are yeah. indeed. It was well, so great you. to talk to you. Thank you very much for inviting me on. You are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on Natural Podcast. And remember, the missing link between failure and success is your health. Content and information provided here is opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstances, Circumstances of Sheldon Natural Podcast, Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the Natural Podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the Natural Podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet, lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguse nor the publisher of this context takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.